Is the audio working? See anything? Nothing. There's nothing. Wait. There are markings. It's some form of elvish. I can't read it. There are a few who can. The language is that of Mordor, which I will not utter here. Aldo. In the common tongue. It's... That was not supposed to happen. <laughs> Let me see if I can bring it to the end. Aldo. In the common tongue, it says one ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, find them. This is the one ring. OK, hi, everybody, and thanks for coming out this morning. Uh, my name is Iris finkelstein Sigi. I'm with Cloudband uh, from uh, Nokia Software. And I'm going to attempt to draw some comparisons between Lord of the Rings and an open and unified infrastructure. Um, and talk about some of the thought processes that are leading us to uh, uh, emphasize this uh, uh, topic of unified and converged infrastructure as the path forward for our customers. So why is all this coming about? Why are we seeing this trend now? Why do we think that it's important uh, uh, as we go forward? So we like to say that the world now works in digital time. Well, digital time means that everything is faster, everything is stronger. Digital time means that things are more immediate and intuitive. And when you connect people and technology together, then you're boosting product productivity and you're bringing services to market faster. And that's one of the concepts that is inherent in a unified infrastructure. Um, so in a digital time, the cloud infrastructure is constantly evolving. And one of the things that we're seeing here is the transformation of virtualization since the early days until today. And we're also seeing or, or, or feeling the change that's going uh, uh, about in the world of DevOps. And we're also seeing more about the trends of flexibility and openness and automation and a lot of other things that we're going to discuss. So first of all, let's break down these concepts a little and, and talk about virtualization. So virtualization is a given. Everybody is virtualized. Everything is virtualized. Um, you know, I have salespeople coming up to me and saying, you know, I, I need to convince this customer. I need to tell them why they need to move to the cloud. I need to tell them why they have to be virtualized. And I tell them, guys, it's, that's not it. It's not there. If they don't know they need to move to, they need to move to virtualized by now, then something's wrong with the way that you're selling. Everything is virtualized. Now let's get them to the next step and make it move forward. So virtual, virtualization is also transformed. And the evolution of virtualization started with monolithic software, so proprietary apps running on proprietary machines, evolving all the way to decomposed apps and microservices and containers and so on, starting with servers um, and going on to an open and shared infrastructure and moving all the way even to serverless frameworks. And of course, going back to the days of manual operations and moving to a world now in which everything is automated and everything is flexible. And that's an important part of the message that we're bringing across. And when we're talking about monolithic, then one of the things that are sort of driving us towards this uh, um, uh, path towards microservices and, and containers um, and a more unified world is the horizontal uh, infrastructure. And the more horizontal we go, the more we are ready for deployments in which a horizontal infrastructure will support all types of workloads and all types of services. So we concluded that virtualization is a given, but obviously DevOps is also a given. Um, and when we're talking about DevOps, I like to talk about something I call the great migration or the great merging of the CTO and CIO role. So 
when the CTO and the CIO are merging, then what we're seeing actually is that the network is becoming software, right? So the network is made up of SDN and NFV, and the network platform is turning into a virtualized data center, and the core network is turning into an all IP network. And the CTO role, which once was more focused on the network, is now more focused on the platform. So these roles are merging and, and the lines are blurring and obviously I think that only a woman could do these kind of things. Um, but w when this person, when this new role is emerging, then they need to start thinking of all of these new aspects that are coming about and they need to start working on new ideas to support all of this unification that's happening, both in the infrastructure and in the DevOps world. So, Again, when we're thinking about the, the, the needs and requirements from these two different personas, the CTO and the CIO, then from the CIO role, they couldn't care less about multi-tenancy, and I'm exaggerating, of course, yes. Um, they couldn't care about multi-vendor and downtime and, and, and security, while the CTO role cares dearly about all of these things, and they care even more about performance planning and scaling and, and, and uh, so on. And when you bring um, enterprise applications into the mix, well, they're actually sort of a mix of the CIO and the CTO role. So with the CIO hat on, then these enterprise guys, they're gonna want to um, steal bandwidth and, and move into resources from the telco world when they have uh, uh, an ad hoc need. Um, when they have their telco hat on, then they have stringent security requirements and they have stringent robustness uh, uh, needs. And, and so they're sort of mixing up these uh, um, two roles. And in this new world, this new persona, this new CTO, CIO role, they're expected, um, at least from the telco world, they're, they're expected to come up with new and innovative technology-based ideas that will bring differentiation to their um, organizations. Um, and you know, th these telco organizations today, they're looking to, um, exp um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're looking to unify, basically. So they, they need to run different types of workloads. They need to run their um, standard Vaulty networks on NFV. They need to run SD1. But they're also looking to support their radio, large-scale radio networks. They're looking to roll out 5G. Um, they need to support the high bandwidth for um, IoT, and they even need to support their edge devices. And they need to do all this with uh, the least amount of resources, bringing down TCO and OPEX, of course. So we come to the how. How is all this going to uh, happen? What are the um, elements, the basic elements behind a unified infrastructure? So let's simplify it and, and, and break it down to the essential elements. Um, and Sorry, let's go back for a second. So breaking it down into four very basic elements, universal applicability, security, serviceability, and operability. And we'll talk a bit about each one of this, these. So universal applicability, this is really a fancy word for um, openness. So we're talking about a solution level delivery. So you want your customers to benefit from the rapid pace uh, of open source innovation, but you also want them to be telco grade and 5G ready. And in order to do all of this together, you need a vendor who has experience, a lot of experience with the open source community and knows how to reach it from, from the source, really. You're looking at interoperability and, and we're talking about multi-vendor operability. So you need your system to work with any VNF from any vendor and you need your NFVI to work with any VNFM and your VNFM to work with any, any, any um, NFVO, sorry. Uh, and all this across different organizations and different vendors and different types of solutions. And you want it to be agnostic to any hardware and to be certified in all of these types of um, hardwares. And again, as I said in the beginning, we're talking about working directly with the community and receiving the code directly from upstream. And, and, and you're doing that to help your customers prevent uh, uh, lock-in and you're delivering without a third party vendor in the middle. So you're cutting out the middleman, delivering to your customers with time to market, lowering TCO and basically optimizing the value chain. The second element is all about security. So you want a solution that is designed bottom up for security with mandatory code inspections for any updates. And it has to be compliant with regional and localized key security protocols, again, built in, inherent to, inherent to the solution. 
You also want a solution that has no single point of failure, that automates encryption protocols and provides high availability. And you want redundancy in your management functions together with load sharing. And also you want the peace of mind that comes from automated anomaly detection with layers upon layers of built-in safeguards. The third topic is all about serviceability. So when we say service serviceability, it's all about the easy and friendly use of your network. So we're talking about across the board monitoring and analytics that allow you to identify and fix failures in real time and that are complexity resistant. When I say complexity resistant, I mean, let's talk about a multi-vendor um, deployment. You want your solution to be able to monitor and analyze across the board, across all the different vendors that are inherent into your solution. And you want automated tasks uh, in your configuration and in your different protocols, both in the virtual world and in the physical network. And again, you want to be connected directly to the community to be able to roll out these services faster to, the, to your customers with time to market directly with the source code. And finally, we're talking about operability. And operability means the ability to operate your network under any circumstance. So we're talking about no down, downtime during lifecycle management uh, tasks such as upgrades and automatic failure recovery. And we're talking about the ability to allow your customers to evolve at their own pace, to transform to cloud native, to transform to containers, to do all of this together with their existing system, whether it's VMs or containers running on VMs or microservices within containers. You need the ability to be flexible and allow your customers that kind of flexibility. Um, and obviously automated management. So you need simple and GUI-based plugins that allow you to overcome human error easily and automate every network task that you're faced with. So again, all of these elements together, openness and security and serviceability and operability, they're all really easy to imagine at the center of this converged future, a future in which your unified infrastructure brings the, uh, the flexibility and automation and the openness and the multi-vendor aspects that you're looking for and allows your customer to ease the transition into the future. So we're talking about a unified infrastructure, again, for all types of customers and all types of workloads. A highly secure unified infrastructure with localized security protocols that is ready for 5G, that allows you to reach edge deployments with latency requirements and a smaller footprint, that brings the source code directly from the community and, and gives and takes with the community, and that's an important part of it. Um, again, allows you to work in a multi-vendor environment with monitoring and analytics across the board, uh, allows your customers to move to containers at their own pace, and eventually, of course, reduces OPEX, reduces TCO, um, and, and you know, ultimately, that's, all, that's what it comes down to. So again, um, one ring to, to rule them all. In Lord of the Rings, this ring was kind of you know, all powerful um, and dark and in the darkness binds them. But when you put all of this together with openness and all the concepts that we've been talking about today, you get one ring to rule them all that goes from telco to IT to enterprise to edge, provides all of the security, all of the openness, um, all of the flexibility that your customers are looking for, but enables them to work in a unified environment that is easy to use, that is serviceable, that is operable. And um, you'll notice maybe that I haven't said the single name of a product today, uh, but again, I'm from CloudBand, and the CloudBand infrastructure software is something that we are demonstrating here today at the Nokia booth. Um, if any of you are interested in hearing more about it, seeing a short demonstration of some of the capabilities that we've talked about here today, you're welcome to join, and if not, continue the conversation with me directly. Um, thank you. Any questions?